second here and keep laughing and smiling. And uh, there you go. The Arch in Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because our guest is Linda Brookhart and she knows a lot about this major issue. We're taping this, I should say, on May 20th. And everybody's, you know, May 20th, if you're watching a day or two later, NATO's over. Everybody in Chicago is thinking about NATO. In fact, almost throughout Illinois thinking about NATO. There's this thing about pension reform. Can Illinois pension reform be done by May 31st, 2012? Because that could be when the General Assembly comes to close or they may go into overtime, you know, or maybe instant death. Hey, that's the name. You could have instant death. Isn't that what they call it when the football teams go into overtime and they score? It's like dead. Whoever done. gets scores is done. So Linda Brookhart's been spending, well, 15 years with before, 15 or 16 years with the Illinois Taxpayer Federation? Taxpayers Federation of Illinois. Taxpayers yes. Federation of Illinois. So you were hanging around and spending time in Springfield then, yes. representing the taxpayers? Yes, corporate. Corporate taxpayers mostly. mostly. Okay. But of course, corporate taxpayers, it's corporations. And what is a corporation? It's simply shareholders, employees, and customers. If you tax a corporation, you know, corporations don't pay taxes. People pay taxes to modify the NRA saying, right? Because if you tax a corporation, it comes from the shareholder, it comes from the, um, the customers, the prices they would pay, or the employees who may lose their jobs, right? Correct. There's no sack of money. That's relevant mm -hmm. because when you talk about pensions, you know, people say, some people say, there's no problem. Henry Bear says, you can just have more re revenue. And we'd like to have Henry come out. He, is, of course, is the main honcho for AFSME, the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees major state employee union. Henry's up here in Chicago. He says, no problem. You should just raise revenue, have a progressive tax, which would raise more money, and tax those corporations, close the loopholes. But Henry, if you do that, tell me, Linda, who would he be taxing? Me and you. you. Individuals. Absolutely. Shareholders in the company. Absolutely. Employees who may lose their jobs or get reduced wages. And Henry should be thinking about that because he represents union employees, maybe not in the private sector, or the customers who pay more. This is a fundamental thing. I even said this to John Filan, who's the chief financial officer way back when, and he said that just wasn't true. And I'm thinking, John, he got an MBA from the University of Chicago. Where do you get the money from? If you tax the corporation and it doesn't come from the shareholder, it doesn't come from the employee, it doesn't come from the customer, then where, where does it come? And on that note, so let me ask you, because you're sort of in between here. You're representing, you're representing SUAA, the State Universities Annuitants Association. Yes. About 16,000 members, but the state universities, that comes from the people who've contributed money to, to uh, SIRS, right? Yes. State Universities Retirement System, about half academic, half non-academic civil service employees, about 200,000 employees, right? Yes, They Plus have a community real, colleges. And community colleges. They have a major interest in what happens to pension reform because if they're currently an employee or if they're a retiree, if they're currently an employee, and one of the suggestions is that we raise the employee contribution from, what is it, 8% to 11%? Yes. It's like Social Security now. Employees pay 6.2%, their employer pays 6.2%. Yes. Since the employer is essentially giving money to the system that could go to the employee, the employee is paying that as well. So the employee is paying 12.4%. People in Social Security for like almost forever, for a long period of time, this had been raised continuously, but I think, hadn't it been, no, it hadn't yeah. been, the, the, the level, the maximum level that's taxed has been raised over time. Yes. And what's the level now, about 116,000? 106,000. 106,000. Not too long ago, it was 80,000, 70,000. Right. But all so those so. employers who pay it into Social Security pay um, essentially 12.4%, the employer contribution, the employee contribution. And yet state employees have only been paying about 8%, right? Correct. Have the, have the employ, has the employer, okay, the state government been paying anything in over time? 
over time they have paid some, but they have not paid the amount that they should have had. That's why we have this 83.5 billion dollars or 85 billion dollars underfunding. So we to don't the know what systems. we don't know what they're supposed to pay. It wasn't a fixed thing like the employers pay six percent, six point two employees pay for Social Security. We don't know what the state government was supposed to be doing, but they didn't do whatever they're the supposed to do. The state government was supposed to be matching what the employers, our employees put in, but because they weren't driven by federal laws or anything, they didn't do it. They actually borrowed from the pension systems. Oops, there's our bat again, okay. Yes, so while the employees always were required to make their 8% contribution, the state used the money for other funding probably for services that we all, the rest of us all enjoyed. So the state didn't do it, people got the benefits of that. And, and most of the people who are in the state retirement system of one form or another, and there are five major pension funds, right? Yes. Most of them do not get Social Security and did not pay into Social Security, is that right? Correct. Some did because they had the job, a job where Social Security was paid into before they came to the government. They may have gone back to it. So some do have Social Security, but the great majority do not have Correct. Social Security eligibility. And a number don't have Medicare availability. But would you say the great majority do have Medicare availability? At this time, they do. Okay. So people are one, you're watching the show and it's uh, May 20th. Maybe you're watching it later. We're taping it on May 20th. And they say, well, what's the problem, Linda? I mean, state employee pension system, uh, okay, it's underfunded, and that may affect the, the employees for the state government. But if, it, if, if John Q. Citizen, Jane Q. Citizen is out there, Joe Sixpack, Jane Sixpack, and they're watching this, and they're saying, well, why, do, why, should we, why should they care? The reason that people should care is because, first of all, the state did not own up to their bargain. Second of all, there is an, a, there's a clause in the Constitution that states that the pensions are protected. What they didn't include in the Constitution was the state had to make their contributions to the pension systems. So now the pension systems are severely underfunded. Yeah, but why do they, oh, Joe Sixpack, he's working for, because I, he's, a he's working for Abbott and you know, he's, interested in what they do. They provide pharmaceuticals, they provide medical equipment, and you know, he's got a good income and he pays taxes. And so like, what does he care about state employee pensions? Because his taxpayer money goes towards those pensions. A lot of it does. A lot of it. So that's the a other good point. Half. But you also have to remember, those that are in the pension systems, they're also taxpayers. I know, but I'm just talking about the person who's not in the pension system now. He's watching this program, and you just pointed out something. You know, the, the total budget for the state of Illinois is $55 billion or more, but that includes money that comes from the federal government. It includes money coming from other governments other than the state government. If you look at the money that just comes from state tax revenue, it's about $33 billion, I think. 33.7, I think. The general revenue fund. Yes. And it was pointed out by Colin Hitt, you know Colin from the Illinois Policy Institute yes. and when he, he was on this program not too long ago. He said, well, the pension payment, the amount of money coming from the general revenue fund in the current fiscal year going to the pension funds, the state employees in their pension funds, about $5 billion. Of that general revenue fund, $5 billion, he said, went to the state employee pension fund. But in addition to that, the pension funds have borrowed over time, and so they have to pay interest and perhaps principal. And so there was another billion dollars that came from the general revenue fund to pay that. So that's six billion dollars of the 33. And then there's health, there's the retiree health care payments of about a billion and a half. So seven and a half billion dollars of the state's 33 billion dollars or so is going to retirees or pensioners or people who are gonna have a pension. So almost 25%, one out of every $4, almost, going to retirees. That means it can't, it can't go to education. It can't go to Medicaid to help low-income people who need health care and assistance. It can't go to the public safety. 
it can't go anywhere. So one out of every four dollars goes to deal with people who once contributed, but pretty much are not contributing now. First of all, am I right on that? I mean, is that is that putting I, it wrong? I think it's actually five point two billion, and part of that. Well, it's even more the, than. Then the argument holds a fortiori, as we say here at the University of Chicago, right? No, one. But what people don't understand that of that five point two billion dollars, part of it is normal cost, and the other part is the payback to the pension systems. So there was a oh, payback. Whatever the point is, seven and a half billion dollars going not to provide for current services. You know, here's the point. You took a course in economics perhaps sometime. You went to- a Long time ago. You went to UIS, University of Illinois Springfield, right? Yes. You may have taken economics then. And you know, people don't teach this so much anymore, but in the olden days when they taught economics about this and basic principles, remember the phrase guns and butter? That is, people can choose. If you had to think of the whole economy and simplify it, you could say you could spend it on guns, defense, or butter, you know, defense, domestic spending. Well, now the choice is for the people of the state of Illinois, not so much guns and butter, it's you can put it into pensions or you can put it into current spending on education, on health care, on, uh, on public safety. And so that's the new guns and butter for the people in the state of Illinois. Am I right? To an extent, but... If the state had made their payments, like if they had been under the laws of the federal government, they would have had to make these, and the pension systems would be at least 100% funded, and we wouldn't be having these conversations. Maybe, maybe. But you know, if. Even through the recession, it's pretty much been proved if wishes, that they would have. If, if wishes were horses, beggars were dried. I mean, you know, if I had some ham and I had some eggs, we could have some ham and eggs. Green ones, too. I mean, so the point, yeah, green eggs, but the point is. It wasn't done, and now, that was then, and this is now. This is the choice. It, do you want to have guns? Do you want to have butter? Do you want to have pension spending? Or do you want to have education? So this is the problem now of the Democratic Party, mostly, because they have been the party that says, we're here to take care of people. More education, we'll give that to you. More health care, we'll give that to you. Well, you know what? The Democratic Party can no longer take care of its constituents because they can't give more education. They can't give more in healthcare because they're too busy spending uh, on pensions. And, and, you know, and, and then that you, was their mistake. Was it? Because some people would say these pensions were overly generous. So you I couldn't don't really. I believe so. You don't think they were? No. Where's, because there are studies that show if you compare state employees, their salaries in Illinois, and their pensions with their private counterparts, much better salaries for these state employees and their pensions better than the salaries for their counterparts and pensions in the private sector. For example, in the private sector, they've almost completely removed anything called a defined benefit pension system, right? Correct. They have defined contribution system. Correct. What do we have in the state of Illinois? We have a defined benefit system. But it's not been proved that it's, that it's unaffordable. It's been, it's been there, there are a number of studies that show in general, not just in Illinois, if state employees have a better funded, deal than their private counterparts and federal employees have a better deal than their private counterparts. And so maybe, maybe Joe Sixpack sitting there and saying, you know, this, I feel a little bit for the state employees, but maybe this is an adjustment they should make. Because Joe Sixpack lost his pension. The new employees Joe Sixpack lost his pension, or he lost at least a good part of it. He's had to adjust. Why should the state employees have to adjust? You know, unfortunately, this has turned into a we versus they, and this should have never happened. Like I said, I'll go back to the state should have funded the pensions, and they didn't. And so now they want the state employees to pay up. But here's the problem with that. We have a lot of low-income pensioners. And so, I mean, we're talking low-income to sixteen to 20000 a year. And that's... I mean, that's the amount of the income they get yes. from their pension, sixteen yes. to 20000 But you know what? And those there are a lot of low income. Employees. There are a lot of low income Social Security recipients who get sixteen to 20000 So why do we think that's a terrible thing for this state because employee when it's not, not a terrible thing for the Social Security. 
No, but there are people who only, their only pension is Social Security, and they may only get 20000 in income from their Social Security. They don't have a, another pension. So here's a low-income person in the state of Illinois. He gets 20000 from his state pension, and there's another person who gets 20000 from Social Security. Now, why? If 20000 is good enough for this person getting Social Security, why isn't 20000 good enough for the person getting the state pension? I think because... It seems to be they're equal, right? I mean, fair is fair. I don't know that you, life isn't necessarily fair. So they chose to work for the state, and these pensions were supposedly guaranteed that this is what they would get for working for the state. Because the state constitution says that. The 1970 amended state constitution, Yes. what is it, Article 13, Section 5, a, or vice it's versa? It's a contract. Basically says these pensions should be viewed as contractual relationships, OK? Yes. That's your point. Yes. Okay, and you can't change it unless you negotiate a change. But there are people and there are organizations that are well respected. Civic Committee of the Commercial Club of Chicago, Civic Federation, and others who have lawyers who've studied this and say, no, you cannot affect the accrued benefits, but current employees who have benefits that have not yet accrued, we can modify them. Now, that might be tested in the Illinois Supreme Court. I'm sure it will be. And it may come out, as you say, or it may come out as the Civic Committee and the Civic Federation says, that is, this can be done. The point is, if you're John Cullerton and you're Senate President of, you're the Senate President, John Cullerton, or you're Speaker of the House, Mike Madigan, or you're Chris Redonio, the Senate Republican leader, or Tom Cross, the House Republican leader, or Pat Quinn, the governor, it is your responsibility, folks, the four tops and the governor, to come up with a solution probably by May 31. I mean, because, you know, the Chicago Tribune, where is the Chicago Tribune? Here we go. Chicago Tribune, Sun Times, the Daily Herald, I think pretty much all the editorial boards say the responsible thing here is not to just pretend the problem doesn't exist. Do something. At least consider that. And so I ask you, Linda Brookhart, yes. will those individuals charged with that responsibility, will they do something significant about Illinois pension reform by May 31? I'm going to say that they will focus, but I don't know that they will get the job done because it took over 40 years, and I don't think in one year that you can make significant change. You don't think so? But they've been unless working you, on they've been working on this for several years. It was a topic in the 2010 gubernatorial race when Pat Quinn was running against Bill Brady. Pat Quinn, Bill Brady said, because we have these up here, the pension reform factors. Okay, they, these are the things that we can modify. We could modify the retirement age. Yes. We could change it from what is it currently? 60. 55. 55. Some, 62. 60. 55. 62. On the depends number on the number of years. Okay. Some have suggested moving it to 67. Governor Quinn, I think, is one of those people. Some have suggested the employee contribution should be increased from 8% to 11%. Some, and we can see this up on the screen now, have suggested the employee salary used for pension calculation should be modified. Sometimes it's the highest four consecutive years. Sometimes it's the last four years. Sometimes it's something else, maybe the highest compensation. If you, fool, if you change any of those factors, that can affect the stability. You can improve the stability of the system, but it can also cut pension benefits. So, so, you, so but also, also, you could also change the COLA, the cost of living adjustment, right? Right now, it's much higher than the rate of inflation, right? 3%. Yeah, it's it goes up 3%, 3% even if the rate of inflation is 1%. So it's not really a cost of living adjustment. And it's compounded as opposed to simple interest. It's very expensive for the taxpayers. The retiree health care payment, we've mentioned how that's not, that's not per se a part of the pension issue, but it does come into play. It is a, something retirees are receiving as opposed to going to current recipients from the budget, current beneficiaries, if you want to look at it that way. It's a retiree as opposed to somebody you're giving some service or you're giving some benefit currently. And then there's the Illinois Constitution, which we mentioned has something to say about what can be done. 
And then there's the cost shift that I think Senate President Cullerton seems to favor, and I think perhaps Speaker Mike Madigan, that would say, you have villages. We say, who pays? Village of the state. Because mainly this has been affecting teachers, but it would, it would also refer to other employees, say, by villages. I call them villages, they're small municipalities. Could be larger municipalities. When these people set up retirement system, pensions, for their teachers, the law was somehow, although the village was voting on it and rewarding and awarding the pension, it was to be paid by the state. And Correct. somehow, nobody, even Speaker Mike Madigan says, he scratches his head and said, and How Speaker Madigan, happen? we'd like you to come on and ask you, but he says, he can't even remember why this was. And if Speaker Mike doesn't know why it was, since he's responsible for most of the major legislation in the state for the last three decades, who does? But the point is, if you change that, and maybe it should be changed, would you agree? I think somewhat. I think one of the things that they could actually do, but doesn't seem to be talked about, that they could focus on how Social Security does does their 3% or not necessarily 3% while you don't give a COLA every no, year. No, but to the COLA, the issue of the cost shifting. A person works, say, in the Winneka Public Schools. She or he teaches. She gets a pension. The people in the village of Winneka elect people who vote on what those pensions should be and what the salaries should be. And yet they don't pay the pensions. The pensions are paid by the general taxpayers of the state of Illinois. They don't do that for people who, you know, for other individuals if they're going to, I mean, usually the person who, who, the person who hires the person to provide the service exactly. pays, but we're saying somebody else pays, so of course they, they give extravagant pensions. They raise salaries so the pensions will be higher than they should be, and they say, who cares? We don't pay. I think That's a perverse incentive, but, right? But the, the state wasn't paying attention. No one has been minding the store. So I would say for many, for a lot of these items that have gone on that has increased the cost, that because no one was minding the store, then they just allowed it to go on. And now it's payday. Right. So now should, you keep going back to the way it was. I'm asking you, Linda Brookhart, Executive Director of SUAA. Should we change that system so that villages would have the proper incentive to award the proper pensions, make them pay, make them pay for the services they're getting and the pensions they're awarding? Or should we continue to have they decide what the pensions should be and somebody else pays, the general taxpayers? I think that the pensions should all be considered in all the budgets of the local units of government, whoever is paying. And so if they can afford it, but people okay. so need it to should go back. Excuse this. me, but are you saying so it should go back? The local municipality should pay. Is that what you're saying? I think you have to be very careful about that because if you push everything back to the local units of government, the school districts, the community colleges, okay. then ultimately, in some areas, you're going to find higher property tax. And okay. so you're basically just shifting what you would pay to the state back to higher property tax. Well, not just, because at least the incentives will be set properly. The person receiving the benefits of that teaching will be paying the cost, right? So, yes, but, but this putting that aside, okay, should but, be done over time. But, but Governor Quinn, he said three things. Increase the retirement age, increase the employee contribution, remove the COLA. He says that stabilizes the system, changes, saves something like 70 to 90, 70 to 90 billion dollars. I think that- Do you agree with the assessment of Governor Pat Quinn? Part of it. Okay, do you agree he's right that if you do those three things, you will fundamentally cure the pension system? Not necessarily. You're not, you're not persuaded? No. Okay, and more to the point, do you think that Madigan and Madigan and Cullerton and Quinn and Redonio and Cross are in agreement and they'll put up the appropriate votes to get those three things legislated? I don't think at this time they are. They're no. not, it's not going to happen by May 31? I don't believe so. What will happen? Will any of those three major things that I mentioned be changed? The retirement age, the COLA, the employee contribution? I think that they will continue. They might work on a couple of the pension systems. They will let the teachers go until at least um, veto session because there's a larger number of people and that's pushing back, that's pushing everything, the expenses down to the 
um, local units of government, yeah. which cannot take a lot of this yeah. on right now. If it's done yeah. over a period of time, yes. So they want to duck the issue. If they go to veto session, they can have people who are lame ducks, who yes. aren't, who are no longer uh, worried about election because they're out of the House or out of the Senate, but they're there to vote. So and, is, and that any way to run a, is that any way to run a railroad? So the elected leaders are going to say, let's push this off so a bunch of folks who are going out of office can make fundamental decisions, and nobody cares if it's the wrong decision, because if somebody who doesn't is upset with them, they're gone. And that's, that is the answer of, I mean, I don't think- Happens all the time. Do you think that's a good way to do it? No. Do you think there, is there a division here? Do you think Rodonio and Cross, the two major Republican leaders, would like to do something as of May 31? Yes. And the Republicans in their caucus would like to do I th something. I think so everybody this is a Republican... would like no, to do. No, 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 no. They would like to do something. And are you telling me that Madigan and Cullerton don't want to? Madigan and Cullerton don't want to. No, I'm not. You're not saying that. What but, I'm well, saying I'm... is that there won't necessarily be an agreement. But why not? Rodonio and Cross. I mean, we haven't had Rodonio and Cross on, but my colleague Terry Martin has had them on the Illinois Channel. So people can watch that at org. You can see my, ter my colleague Terry Martin interviewing people on these pension issues, including Tom Cross, the Republican leader, including Chris Rodonio, the Senate Republican leader. But so far, you can't see either my colleague, my colleague, Terry Martin, interviewing Speaker Madigan or me, or you can't see my colleague, Terry Martin, interviewing Senate President Cullerton because they've declined so far to appear. They, and, and you know, we're still ready. We hope that Cullerton and, 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 and Madigan will come Come in Springfield to meet with uh, Terry Martin or Jeff Berkowitz here in Chicago. Don't you think they should do that? I think that they should. But I think that there's, some, there's another pawn piece out there that you're not paying attention to, which is the Oops, here's our health bat. insurance. You're wondering, people are wondering, why do we have this bat here? It's always getting in the way. Yes. It's simply because I think better, like most guys, if they have a bat in the hand. And to show it's not gender specific, Linda, oh. take that bat and take a cut. All right, see, that's a cut. Dude, uh, there you go, you can see she's handed right there. So you can think better with a bat in your hand too, right? Yes, it's of not course. A gen It's not a gender thing. No, absolutely not. All right. So you're already thinking better, but she's swinging there. And so what were you saying now? I'm saying that there's another p pawn piece that, that you're not necessarily looking at, which is the health insurance and Senate Bill 1313, which the governor wanted passed rapidly and they were able to do that, which will now charge the uh, retirees for okay, a so that's portion done. of that's their done. health insurance. That's done. And the Medicaid reform is probably going to get it's done. It's not to deal done with... because the governor hasn't signed but it. But don't you think he'll sign it? It depends because it'll depend on what agreement. On the pension stuff. Yes. He may not sign it. He may not get If he gets what he wants in the pensions, he may not sign it. He, he, may, he may veto it? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Okay, and Medicaid reform? It was reform? his idea. Medicaid but... reform, will that get done? Yes, it'll have to. The pension reform doesn't. So this, so to the dismay perhaps of the Civic Committee, to the dismay of the Civic Federation, to the dismay of the editorial board of the Chicago Tribune and the Sun-Times and the Daily Herald, the legislators duck the issue one more time come the end of May. I don't think they're ducking, they just can't come to an agreement. Part of it might be figured out. Who is it out? who can't? Redonio and Cross are ready to step up, they agree. So who it is who can't? You're saying that Cullerton, are you saying Cullerton and Madigan are afraid speaking. that their Democratic constituency and the unions will take it out on them? We're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank our guest, Linda Rupert, Executive Director for SUAA, for coming here today and dealing with these tough issues. Thank you so much for coming, all the way from Springfield. Thank you. And we'll have you back. But you're saying they're not ducking, but they're not dealing with...